So, we are outside Hillerød to do our first test flight with the DJI Mini 4K. So let's just start by unpacking the drone. And I managed to get a new firmware installed onto uh, this one, even though I had a few issues uh, with the pre-released uh, yeah, version of the DJI Fly app. But I found out that it was actually not uh, the drone's fault. It was an uh, Aero 40. The guy 40 centimeters behind the device and it was because i was using an outdated version of the dji fly app and that was what prevented me from installing the firmware so but now everything is like it's supposed to so we take off the gimbal cover and we fire up the drone and uh, as we saw before we left the office uh, it was actually possible uh, to get uh, the the free well uh, ND filters to fit onto the drone but we are not going to use ND filters today because I want to show you what the raw footage looks like without anything in front of the camera so I'm plugging in the phone like this adding the cable firing up the DJI Fly app No, so we are outside the Novo Nordisk uh, facility in Hillerød. I'm just going to take a small sneak peek uh, how far they are with the, the installation. I thought that could be fun. It is a little bit windy today, uh, but uh, let's see how it goes. So, see, I'm taking out uh, the sticks. They are tucked nicely away here in the base. And I'm putting those here so they are nicely tucked in. So, we have one of the problems using your phone <laughs> when you're outside in the sun this iPhone actually dims down so sometimes it's very very difficult to see what it is that is actually being shown on the screen but this is what we have to work with as it is right now so I'm firing this one up making sure that I have a screen recording running here so everything's running yeah so now everything is ready we are ready to go so we start by saying uh, press the go fly button here and now we're getting a lot of information which is nice if you are a newbie to the hobby we need to agree full responsibility for flying in this zone we do that of course before we take off we better check that there is no issues flying here so what I do now is I start another screen recording here. So what I do now is I'm going into Drone Sona.dk, which is an application that you have access to here in Denmark. And uh, of course I should have done that before <laughs> I went here. But I picked this location randomly uh, when I drove by. Um, as I've just been to a really fantastic car meetup in uh, Helsinger with a lot of Ferraris and a lot of other fancy cars. And this phone also has the same problem. You can't see anything that's going on here. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. And then press the cross here, here. See. So there's a private airstrip here nearby. And what does it say? Uh, drone flying is permitted but you need to exert extra caution when you're flying so there's no problem flying in this area so that's good so that's um that's useful information see these look at this it's completely black i can't see what's going on in the phone but at least i saw what i needed to see so let's stop the screen recording here and talk that phone away let's get airborne and see what we can do with this Let's just check the camera settings here. So we start out in the low end. And uh, so this is uh, 1080p 30. So let's, let's get it up here. And out in the middle. But it's get, it gets kind of boring to do 1080p 30. So let's just park the drone here a little bit 
and uh, stop the recording and then jump in on the resolution and see we can bump it up to 4k and then we can do like 30 fps and then we can start the recording again we can start flying here so we are flying towards these buildings over here maybe don't want to go completely close to the building and this is when we get the gimbal knocked out of position <laughs> So let's say that we don't want to go the complete way to this uh, construction side over there. That might not be a good idea. I don't know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the weekend, so maybe that's not a big issue. But look at this. We have two times magnification now. Two times uh, digital magnification. So of course you will have maybe a little bit of quality loss, but it's a nice feature to have that will allow you to uh, yeah, capture objects closer by than they are in real life so so that is uh, super nice we can also play a little bit around with it let's just fly around here film a little bit so we can see the difference so you can compare it and you have all the standard modes uh, available uh, on the drone you have a um, you can see you have the cinema mode you have the normal and you have the sport mode and then um, we also have the strong wind warnings it seems it's windy every time that i'm out testing you can see that's actually quite a huge difference if you have two times um, yeah magnification so this is what we have here so let's continue to fly a little bit further towards the building maybe we want to flick it in sport mode so we are flying a little bit faster when we do it We are fighting a little bit the wind here. So maybe we need to go further down. And the gimbal is also struggling a lot here. Maybe I should, should go further down. You need to be a little bit careful when you're flying in close proximity to objects because you don't have any sensors that will protect the drone. So let's just fire a few uh, images in. So if I go into photo mode, I have uh, the, the regular options. I have the option to take a single photo. I can take an AB where I'm getting one that is overexposed, one that's underexposed and one that's neutral exposed. So let's just do one of those. And we want to make sure that we have the JPEG plus RAW option uh, enabled so we get the maximum flexibility in post. So let's take an AB photo. So now we're getting six images, three RAW images and uh, three JPEG images. There's also the possibility to do time shots where you could set a fixed interval between each uh, image that uh, the drone is taking. That might be super nice if you're just sipping around and want some images of the area. The video mode, yeah, we have all of that. Maybe uh, we should, uh, just for the sake of it, just try the 2.7 and bump that up to 60 FPS. So, we try and follow that car. So we see I can slow this down if I want to with a factor two because I'm doing 60 FPS. It flies like you would expect any GGI product would do. And I haven't even trimmed in the parameters yet. But look at this. You can do uh, nice stuff like this. There's no, uh, no problems in doing that. So, let's just try and it is actually quite wind sensitive, I must say. We're kind of getting used to this, it's not uh, such a big challenge, but you can also hear that it is a, it is a little bit windy now, right now. <laughs> Let's just bring the drone a little bit down here and bring it a little bit closer to me. So. This is flight over here. We could do the slow motion test. So. So see now I'm slowing it down. So. Put the, let's put it back in 4K uh, 30 FPS. 
like this. Then with a drone like this, you don't have all the fancy features, but you do have access to some of the automated quick shot modes that will allow you to do different stuff. And you can see that I'm pre-selected here. So if I'm selecting myself and I've selected a drone, I can say I want the drone to move 60 meters backward here. And if I press start, what you would see now is that the drone would basically back away from me and it will ascend while it's filming. But that's a super nice way to get started until you get comfortable using uh, the sticks. Then it's super, super nice and uh, easy way to capture some quite stunning shots. And the cool part is once it is done with the quick shot, it will return to the same position where you started the mission. So now it's coming back. Come back! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's now it's saying returning. So you have a selection of, uh, I believe it's five drones, not five drones, but five quick shots available inside uh, from the menu. And again, you can uh, adjust the resolution here in the corner. You can uh, adjust it if you want it to be 4K or whatever that you want it to do. So that's super nice, super flexibility. And you can see you have, let's just do one uh, rocket. You can do that in 4K, that's super nice. And you can see you have a additional circle, helix and boomerang. Let's just try a rocket. Let's just let it go to 40 meters. That's nice. And then we press start. So what, what you would see now is that the drone will go up. And then it will keep the subject that we selected in the frame. You see now it goes up and it goes up to 40 meters. Now it kind of lost track of me. And then it will go back. So. And quite soon we are being squeezed on battery. It was not a fully charged battery that I plugged into the drone before we did this, but we have one more thing that I want to show you. So now it's returning. And you will have all those clips uh, available on uh, the SD card that is mounted in the drone. So I just want to show you the panel function. And uh, for that, we want to do like a wide angle. Now we can do a sphere. I, maybe you can't do a sphere. Just want to do a wide angle. That's a very, very useful one. Again, we want to make sure that we have JPEG plus RAW. And then, oh. We just go up here at a certain distance. So we just ignore this for now. So now we have a little bit of squeezy here. So we are here now. Low battery return to home. Yes, yes, we know that. So what, I, what it's doing now, it's actually taking nine individual photos and they are stitching those together to one single image. So in that way, even though it's a small sensor, you can basically expand the photo capabilities of the drone. So let's just, just for the sake of it here, I'm just hurrying here and then we land the drone. Just take a single photo just for comparison so you can see how much larger the image is when it's stitched together with the, with the, yeah, from such a huge amount of photos. Let's just get it over here. Let's see if we can hand land it. We could hand land it. So. And by the way, I do not recommend hand landing or hand catching the drone if you're a beginner. You can wait a little bit with that part, but I'm still going to show you. <laughs> and there's one thing that's important. If it goes into this attitude mode that you say, let's say that I launched it already now, then there's no GPS lock, so the drone will drift all over the place. It will keep its attitude, but it will sort of drift around so you don't want to do that so if you want to hand launch it you want to make sure that it's it's away from uh, your face so, so it goes up like this so let's just jump in on the uh, panorama shots so I can tell you what you have so you have the spherical one the one where you can uh, put together a lot of images to do like a, a globe 
and you can upload the result of that stitching onto Facebook and uh, people can sort of scroll around inside and explore that image because it's a three-dimensional. Then you have the wide angle one I just showed you where you take nine individual photos, both in JPEG and RAW, and stitch those together to one single image. And th the cool part about that is that that expands the photo capabilities of the drone quite significantly. And then you have then you have the 180 degree one that's basically a simplified version of the wide one where you get three images uh, next to each other stitched together to one single image. They used to be like one in the other direction but uh, that seems to have been left out by now. So this is basically what you're getting with the DJI Mini 4K is that you're getting photo mode with a single photo A, B and time shots. You're getting video where you can adjust from 4K down to 1080p with different uh, uh, yeah, frame rates. You have uh, the quick shots where you have the drone and the rocket that I just shown. But apart from that, you also have the circle, you have the helix and the boomerang. And I would highly encourage you to go out and try out these functions because they're fully automated. You just need to make sure that there's room where you are testing out these. Finally, there's the panel shots that we just discussed. So this more or less summarizes uh, what you're getting uh, with this drone. It's a C0 drone. So if you're flying it in EU under the EASA drone regulations, there's no requirement of remote ID. So you don't need to worry about that one. The only thing you need to do is register as a drone operator. Make sure that you have added the drone operator idea on top of the drone. And of course, a drone like this do not offer the same uh, yeah, functions and uh, features as we are seeing in the older, more expensive versions. So if you just take a, a quick glance through the menus, you can see there's the usual stuff in here that will allow you to do all the basic things uh, with the drone. You have uh, the control function where you can adjust between metric, metric in kilometer and in PL. You can uh, adjust the text size in case that you need that and you can play around with the gain and expo settings um, to sort of trim how the drone reacts. The camera here we are in photo mode right now let's just jump in video mode here so if I jump in under this menu it's context sensitive so the, the menu is actually changing depending on what you have selected in the main interface. As you can see here, there's very limited options uh, for the camera. But there is a few things that I would recommend that you will enable. One is the histogram. The other one is the overexposure warnings. And there's also the grid lines, the rule of third, that will help you in the composition of uh, your video footage. So that's definitely something that I would encourage you to enable. There's also something called frame guide. I've never used that before, but that is supposed to help you sort of yeah make videos that look better or more cinematic and you also have the option to uh, play around with the manual and the auto white balance but for now just let that stay in auto another really cool thing then uh, if you are using uh, the phone maybe that your phone is low on battery and you need to get the job done anyway there is actually a nice setting down here that i have almost forgotten existed when flying with the phone and that is the possibility to enable phone charging so you can basically because the battery is quite huge inside the remote you can basically enable phone charging so you if you are low on the battery for the phone you can charge it with the the battery that's inside the remote so that's super cool okay and the app as of recording this video is the 113.2 and we are using the aircraft firmware 0107400. This drone will not be available uh, outside uh, Europe and uh, US and will only be offered through Amazon. In case you want to pick one up and find it very interesting, then there are relevant links in the description below. And if you have additional questions that you want to know about the product, then dump them or uh, dump them, <laughs> drop them in the comment section below and I will do a follow up video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you around.